welcome everybody. Today is a great Sunday, a little cold here in the Pacific Northwest, but we're warm with the Holy Spirit. So for those of you watching this afterwards, uh, welcome. You are certainly, uh, whether you watch us on YouTube uh, afterwards or you are here in person on Zoom, you are most welcome and blessed. And, and we will take a look at some thoughts from the scriptures, the Revival Fellowship, Seattle, Victoria, Winnipeg, Toronto, Mexico, all of us together around the world, uh, believing that the Bible is the word of God, that Jesus came in human form, fulfilled his father's plan and his purpose, uh, being baptized by John, setting an example for all of us that we should be baptized, and then uh, dying the ultimate death. That sacrifice was our benefit, the forgiveness of sins, the hope of life everlasting. But one better, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came forth in the, in the form of a fire on the disciples. They all spoke in other tongues. And now this is passed on to us this day, that in the same stead, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, we can now experience that in our lives and by the good name of jesus we can now have that name written on each and every one of us and can shine that hope of the resurrection of the dead to others out there that might be in need and might be lost might be hurting you know it, it goes without saying that we look around and we see people that are hurting people that are lost people that are in desperate situation people in the church that are going through struggles and trials. At times like this, we need to look into the word of God. At times like this, we need more prayer, as we do within our fellowships. The, the ministry that we've been seeing has been excellent. People making the effort to get together, to pray, to fast, to uh, break bread from house to house. We want to keep that going. We want to do it together. Amen? All right, let's open up to a scripture, and let's just talk about what it means to have a good name. In Proverbs 22, verse 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver or gold. And in Ecclesiastes 7, 1, it says, a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Now, that's, that, that's quite emphatic there, and it's something that uh, we just had a pastor's meeting with all the pastors around the world, and, and on that, it was, okay, well, how do you minister to people? What's the, what's the deal with young people? Sounds like a Seinfeld. What's the deal with young people today? Anyway, the, the attitude of the pastors around the world was one that we all share and are unified in that we are going to trust you until you give us a reason not to trust you. So that seems fair, doesn't it? You have the trust of the oversight. You have the trust of the, the leaders, the brothers and the sisters, until you give us reason not to. The sneaking around, ooh, shh, don't tell the pastor or, or otherwise, which eventually, of course, uh, gets revealed. And then, of course, hmm, okay, well, now we've, it's one of those things there was no problem officer but now there is a problem because uh you didn't declare something or you tried to be sneaky about it and in business of course uh or in your workplace it's a very solid answer that it's very hard to gain a good reputation in today's day and age but it's so easy to lose it. It takes years and years, uh, and Bobby knows this, building up a business uh, in the uh, uh, that you can go, 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 and then you get one customer that isn't satisfied, and they tell 10 people, and next thing you know, you're scrambling, uh, running on defense to try and clean up the mess of the, the bad publicity of suddenly something that happened 
and it it's important for all of us and again i i speak to myself when i say this is it's one to remind i don't put myself up there as saying that i've always been the most perfect person in the world that was something else that came up at the pastor's meeting uh pastor john kuhlman was uh, was saying you know uh pastors aren't perfect and then he joked and he said oh am i allowed to say that you know aren't we supposed to be perfect aren't, aren't we the 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 anointed the the shepherds over the flock that jesus has uh, has appointed and and guess what we aren't perfect and it is one thing that uh, of course uh, happens that a and it is a true thing the worst mistake a pastor can make is to make a mistake but in doing that it's how you can recover from that because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god and we are all there as well so you know i, I go out and maybe i'm out there refereeing volleyball and of course everybody knows that oh he's a pastor he, it, suddenly if i suddenly lose my cool out there uh, then uh, what's going to happen? Hey, wait, I thought you were a pastor. You know, I was going to seek some ministry and maybe think about coming to your church, but now maybe I'm not. Or if I get in traffic and I get cut off and, hey, buddy, well, shouldn't do that, right? Right? <laughs> it shouldn't be yelling and screaming because next thing you know, you run into the person. And, oh, uh, yeah, okay, I guess you're not going to come to the church now because I lost my cool out there or whatever. But it is one of those things that it, it is, uh, you know, there's always a story, always something, but we need to make sure that we are maintaining our testimony. A and again, I reinforce this. We have a good book. If we follow the book and we pray and we fast and we read it and we are fellowshipping together, then that's going to be a reminder. And guess what? If we have those moments when we have let the team down or let ourselves down or let God down or or maybe not let God down, but you know, somehow the enemy likes to make us think that we're letting God down. Do you understand that? I want everybody just to think about that because you know talking to jordan about his uh, volleyball referee jordan's a new volleyball referee and he's he's doing well but i'll talk to him sometimes and and oh man i really messed up i i, I just you know maybe i should just pack it in i'm terrible and i was talking to another referee that figured he was the he'd had a bad friday oh i had a bad game the coach was yelling at me and and maybe maybe i'm just not cut out for this refereeing and and so we could feel like that in the Lord. So now here I come in in the drive out with uh, with with uh, young Isaac is his name, and and I, I've had conversations with Jordan. No, it's not you. You're not that bad. You're just in the beginning stages of learning how to be a referee, and so just be calm and sure enough later that day everything got revealed to me as i ended up doing a match with the coach that had given uh isaac a hard time the day before and he started we had a young female referee up there she's just first year university maybe 20 years old and uh, she was doing a fine job and there were a couple of little double hits and and the coach really wanted it and started mark that's ruining the integrity of the game and he started yelling at her and then he actually threw his clipboard down. I mean, he just lost it. It, it, was a, it was a terrible incident that happened. And I felt for this girl, but I, I tell you, and, and this is where I talk about me losing my cool. I was like, you know, stop talking, coach. I, I won't name him, but stop talking. So, and I gave him three opportunities and then he kept going on. And then I just looked him in the eyes and I gave him the, uh, the fire of God. That's against the code of conduct. That's against safe sport abusing young female officials you know better and i'm going to write a report to your principal and put a put a an official report in and of course i was like my fire fiery eyes and i was just ready to go and okay calm mark calm you gotta you know remember you are a uh, you gotta keep a testimony here and, and at that moment admittedly i was a little hot but guess what happened and, and i respect this coach for that he went, 
Mark's right. I apologize. Went to the female referee. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. And uh, wow, in 20 years of refereeing this coach, and I, I know him, he's got a reputation of being a bit of a hothead. Uh, I've never seen him do that before. So anyway, praise the Lord at that moment. But the point was, this referee was not bad, but she got down. And it was like the enemy sometimes gets us down and makes us think, oh, you're the worst Christian ever. You're not praying enough. You're not witnessing enough. You're not super spiritual like all the other people in the fellowship. Why can't you do better? Well, again, you know the way, you know, Bobby and I have been providing ministry to everybody in the Pacific Northwest is like, look, uh, we can always do better, but we are not here as uh, as leaders in oversight to beat people up and and make them feel like uh, like they're worthless our job is to say look you're doing what we would expect of a christian at this point if you want some tips on how to get better then let's look to the word of god together because maybe as a pastor or as a leader or as a brother that's in oversight Maybe we can do some things to improve our walk as well. Maybe we can outreach a little bit more. Maybe we can set the example of, okay, let's get on our knees and have 20 minutes of prayer in the spirit all together. And those are the things that I appreciate and, and all of us do when you're praying for the oversight. Because as much as possible, we sometimes feel like, you know, and the enemy likes to beat us down too, that maybe we don't have a good name and maybe we need to do better but when we build each other up it is a lot better just like the 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 situation with the referee so jordan is a good referee despite some of his uh self-confidence issues that sometimes come out uh but he's also a beginning referee this is the first year he is doing it and so if a new person comes along into the lord guess what we don't expect Freya to be perfectly graceful and uh, and patient in church, right? She's a young baby. And guess what the babies do? They spill things. They make a mess. They cry when they shouldn't be. But as we teach them and as the Josh and, and Cassie provide the oversight, it's the old uh, Aristotle thing. The What's the first thing you teach a child? You teach them obedience. And the second thing, whatever you want so when Frey is brought up in the fear and admonition of the lord with good parents that we are all supporting then there you go now that's a literal baby example but as we know anybody that comes along and is newly baptized and spirit filled is on that path as well great salvation you know the old saying that the best thing that can happen to you after you get baptized and spirit filled is you get hit by a bus now, we're going to get into a scripture in that in a second, but think about that. The best thing that can happen to you is to know that your salvation is assured, that your name is written in the book of life, and that you're going to rise and meet the Lord in the air. And we read all of that in Revelation 20, 21, 22. Wow, I want to be there. And I'm going to do everything I can and I'm going to make whatever sacrifice is necessary to be there. And all the people said, that's where I want to be. That's where you want to be. That's where I want all of you to be with me. That's the job the Lord has given me. That's the job the Lord has given each and every one of you. Yes, I am my brother's keeper. Amen. Smile. All right. Well, let's get into it then. Let's take a look at at Paul in Philippians uh, 1. Philippians 1, if you want to open to it. I'll give you a second. Uh, Anthony's already got the scripture up there. Atta boy, way to go, brother. And uh, But if you want to take notes or open to your paper Bibles, practicing for that day that eventually you go sit in on the Vancouver Fellowship. The first point, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. As I said, if you're alive, I can go talk to people about Jesus. I can go to Mexico, Bucerias, and preach the gospel. I can go to Seattle and support the fellowship there and see some baptisms. 
I can go to camps. I can go to the Philippines. I can go to all of these different places that are possible. Georgia, Fresno, LA, wherever it is, walk and talk, share the gospel and see people come to Christ. But let's not kid ourselves. It is much better to be in the presence of the Lord than to be absent from that. And so to die is gain. And that's what Paul is, is mentioning here. Now in verse 22, he gets into it a little bit what I said, for if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Uh, yet what I shall choose, I wot not. In other words, I'm, I'm kind of caught between it in, in 23. For I am straight betwixt two. <laughs> My apologies to the to the uh, people that English isn't their first language. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit. Having desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. And we'll read 24. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So Paul is basically saying is like, hey, I I'm caught between a rock and a hard place here. I'd love to just pack it in and die and and then I'm with the Lord. That's what we all want to be. But yet I'm alive and I'm not going to take that in vain. You cannot go in and, uh, you know, off yourself and figure that that's going to be a good thing. To live is a gift of God. Life is a gift of God. And let nobody forget that. Let nobody ever water that down in your way of living. If you are alive, you are alive. And that's a wonderful thing. And Paul is just being very honest there that, oh, gee, I don't know, maybe, you know, having my, my head chopped off by Nero is going to be a good thing. But then hang on, while I'm here, I can write all these letters and I can encourage people and I can talk to Luke and Timothy and Titus and and uh, straighten out the Corinthian church. There's some problems in Corinth and I really got to get there and and do some ministry to them because uh, uh, things are a bit out of order and I want to I want to go there and, and help them reorder things so that that things are better. So in his head, he's going, all right, being with uh, being dead is going to be better, but all right, there's a job to be done. And that's the answer to each and every one of us. Let's keep that good name. Let's keep going. Let's keep telling people about the things of the Lord. We got too much good in the last little while to let any of that go untouched or untapped. Let's keep going. There are going to be others come along. Uh, you know, just also uh, from the pastor's meeting, uh, the other exciting thing is now the Spanish meeting, because it's regularly being broadcast and is available around the world. We are finding people that are talking to their Spanish friends or family members saying, get on Zoom. 1.30, Cata Domingo. What did I just say? Every Sunday? Cata Domingo? Is that right? You're saying yes. You're saying it's bueno. Okay. Every Sunday, 1.30 Pacific time, 3.30 in Bucerias. You get on, get a Spanish meeting. You tell your friends, family, anybody that has a Wi-Fi connection to do that. And we're actually starting to see the, the fruits of the labor there starting to expand as well. And how exciting. There's a lot of Spanish speakers that could come to the Lord. So people... Uh, talking about going to Argentina to preach the gospel there. People going to Colombia, maybe Ecuador again, Panama, Chile, all these places that are Spanish speaking that need the word of God, preach to them faithfully and in spirit and in truth. That's the good name that we have and that's what is happening now. So let's keep supporting that that mission all right now what about the good name what about the power that god has given us and that's the whole point that as we know when you are spirit filled when you have received the holy spirit you have power to be the sons of god power to go and preach the word faithfully but that's a humble responsibility i say that it is incredible 
incredible the explosive dynamite power that is in each and every one of you if you have received the Holy Spirit. The sickness, the disease, to anything that is an obstacle in your path, to be able to speak to that and see it gone is amazing. And as we see in Luke 10, the humble revelation is in Luke 10 and in verse 20, It says, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, which is an incredible power, but rejoice rather because your names are written in heaven. And, you know, the, the other thing that I often like to on talks like this, and of course we go to it quite regularly, but in, in Hebrews 11, and you can flip open to it, Where are we? There we go. So if you flip open to Hebrews 11, the Faith Hall of Fame is something that really is a good reminder to each and every one of you. You're feeling down and out, maybe thinking that you're not doing the best. Take a look at some of the histories of the people that are written in the Faith Hall of Fame and feel a little bit better about yourself. You've got uh, murderers, fornicators, you've got uh, harlots, you've got uh, people that, yeah, absolutely stood the test of time. You've got people that lied, cheated, stealed, stole. And it just you read through it and you go, oh, okay, that's, uh... but yet out of all of it, the point wasn't their life story. The point was how they finished to keep their good name. And that's the important thing when we're walking along. You have a moment where things aren't working out, a moment when there's an error or something goes wrong. But then if you pick yourself up and you get on with it and you make it to the promised land and and uh, or you lead your family out of Egypt, as in the case of Joseph, uh, the and, and we'll just talk about that in a second. Let's go to Hebrews eleven thirty nine, and we're talking about a few things here. Actually, we'll get back to that in a second. But uh, in uh, Hebrews eleven thirty nine, the whole list of people: Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Rahab, all of the names that are written in there. Samson, others, right? Wow. Incredible stories. But these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Their name's written in the Faith Hall of Fame, but they didn't receive the promise that you and I have. The promise of the Holy Spirit. The promise of seeing and reading the stories of the Lord experiencing speaking in tongues the power the resurrection power the healing power seeing the dead raised the blind see the lame walk the person with hiv aids healed hallelujah the person in the homeless shelter now having a good job and standing up here and giving wonderful talks the person that's been there since day one and has faithfully continued on all of us are in the same thing together. And in verse 40, God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. The only perfect thing is when God fills us with the Spirit. So if we, let's go to Philippians 4, 3. We'll just do a couple more scriptures, rapid fire here to finish things off. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help these women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other fellow laborers whose name are in the book of life. Now, now I remember why I put that in there. That's Paul after going through the whole Philippians, not the Philippines, Philippians. Yeah, I know he wasn't in the Philippines. Philippians, they didn't even call it the Philippines at that time, uh, named it after a Spanish king. 
But the point is, that's where you wanted to be written. Paul writing a letter and he goes on about uh, Clement and the, the women and the laborers and their names are written in the book of life. All of these people. That's a great way to be remembered is that your name's written in the, you know, oh, that's pretty good. Not that we aspire to that. We're humble servants. If my name's not written in there, in the the gospel messages or in the book of Acts, that's not important. What's important is that my name is written in the book of life. All right. And as I said, Joseph was sold into slavery and we know the story. Uh, Bobby's given a couple of good talks about that. And uh, the point of Joseph that we always like at times like this is that he could have whined, could have complained, had every excuse in the world, the systems against him, his brothers turned against him. All I wanted to do was to see the good done and tell everybody about these dreams. Yeah, he's a little cocky and arrogant and and probably needed to be taken down a few pegs. Uh, that's fair. I think uh, he got that a little bit of humbling. But also in the midst of that trouble, rather than complaining or giving into temptation, Potiphar's wife said, come on, big boy. Nobody's around. My husband's away. Let's go. He ran away and wouldn't have anything to do with that. Nobody's looking, but God is. God's always watching. And so he did not give in to temptation. He trusted that God had a plan. And in the end, it was revealed. He was sent there, border security style, to let his family be fed in the midst of a famine. And then later on, Moses would be raised up as a prophet to lead them to the promised land. Amen. Hebrews 13. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to try and keep this on time here. I know I got a little long-winded there, but we will we'll catch up. Don't worry. All right. By him, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the first fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. That's why I always say on the prayer list, first thing on the prayer list, always thank you, God, for answered prayer. The prayer and testimony site on Revival Fellowship is obviously for people in prayer need and request, but it can also be thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Remember that. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Uh, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. That's the oversight. And thank you for praying for each and every one of us, as they must give an account, and they must do it with joy and not with grief that is uh, unprofitable for you and uh, you know, over the years, uh, I, I have an appreciation for the council and the other pastors that are out there. They do need our support. Uh, and it is, uh, uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's a lot of work. And it's something that uh, uh, we we understand and we appreciate it. We're smaller fellowship here. And thankfully, uh, you know, nobody gives the oversight too much grief here. Uh, but uh uh, we do appreciate that support. So pray for us. We trust uh, we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. Are you on the next verse, Anthony? 18? 18. Yeah, there we go. And then one down, 19. But I beseech you rather to do this, that I may be restored to you sooner. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. He's the ultimate shepherd. We're just the little shepherds that uh, have a, a small little paddock to attend uh, to. And this is the answer in verse 21. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we'll just rapid fire through this. We'll go to Colossians 3.17. Colossians 
And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And, and that's an important thing to understand. Is that's the good name that we want to protect because we are representing that good name. So in as much as it's about our good name, our reputation, people, you know, looking at us, when we go out there, if we understand what's at stake, that we are representing Jesus in our actions and in our deeds, then we're going to do better. All right, let's finish off in Ephesians 3, and then we will, I guess Anthony said he's doing communion today. Okay, so we'll finish off in Ephesians 3. The way I always say uh, and agree with uh, with people that say, when you pray, get on your kneeling pad, get on your knees. For this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That's the name that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might of his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height that's four dimensions the world is three dimensions. God is four dimensions. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's what he wants, that your soul prospers. He wants good things for each and every one of us. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church of christ jesus throughout all ages world without end amen and all the people said amen and we'll end it there